Hey everyone, welcome to the Secret Spirits and Others. I'm John, I'm here with Chris and Phil, and we have a really special episode for you today. I've, I've been working on this puzzle since 2004, and one of the questions that I've never been able to answer and that just drove me out of my mind is, why is there a month, a flower, a birth flower, and a gemstone? but they have no bearing on the puzzle. They all work together at some level, but they really ne never help to forward the puzzle. I think we've answered that question over the last couple of days. And, you know, we usually do our alcohol break halfway through, but guys, I'd like to raise a toast to you both and just thank you for, you know, the knowledge that you brought, the ideas, the brainstorming sessions that we've had, you know, it's, it's been amazing. And I don't think this could have come about without, you know, us working on the puzzles together. So thanks. I'm, uh, I'm having a scotch. It's Sullivan's Cove. It's an Australian scotch. Um, they actually won uh, whiskey of the year one year. This isn't it. You couldn't get that whiskey. Uh, I tried very hard, but fantastic. What are you guys drinking? Got a Balvenie 12 year triple cask. And uh, Brooke Laddie and Isla supposedly unpeated. Amazing. Still smoky Cheers. though. Smokies. Uh, cheers guys. Well, well, let me kick it off and, and just kind of tell everyone what brought us to where we are. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, what the immigration theme is with Montreal. Very confusing. French makes a ton of sense. You know, it's obviously the, the Dutch puzzle, you know, but why and how does that, you know, become relevant? Um, the other day, you know, I, I'd had something in the back of my mind for a while, but it, it just seemed a little bit out there. So I never put it put it out to people and talked about it too much because there's just a ton of criticism right and the whole concept was that the the dutch golden age you know the painting was painted in the style of a, a rembrandt self-portrait you know obviously one of the dutch masters you know in the dutch golden age and we know that there's a golden square in the puzzle and you know i've always made the you know, assumption or, you know, based on some research, think that this is located in the golden square mile. So I started to think maybe that Dutch connection, it isn't, it isn't as deep as we think. It's really golden age to golden square mile. And I left it at that, you know, and, and funny enough, Phil, you picked up on this and I think you blew it wide open. So I'm going to kick it over to you. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, your thoughts, you know, how, how some of this, you know, transpired and coalesced in your mind and yeah. uh, we'll go into it. Yeah. So I want to give a little overview of kind of the concept, I guess, that came about from this. And then we'll get back into Montreal in a couple of seconds um, and continue exactly what you're talking about. So pretty much it seems that there's strong evidence that there's a tangible link between something related to the month of each image, something notable about the immigration group selected in the end area. And like you mentioned, the main concept that was holding us back originally was looking for an end area that ties directly to an immigration group. And like Cleveland set that precedent with the, you know, of overtly Greek area. But I think you'll find that that gets pointed to in the image as well with, with what we're talking about. But yeah, anyway, instead of looking for an area that ties to the immigration group, we should be using knowledge of the immigration group to get to an area. And it seems that it's like a notable feature of the immigration group and the area shares that feature. And additionally, we know that Byron has chosen these months for each puzzle. So we've deduced that something about the month corresponds to this feature of immigration group that then shows us what we're looking for in an end area. So essentially you can make like three groups of data the puzzle month and its associated flower, gem, zodiac, the lores within, or even just like the, the number of the month sometimes comes into play. 
And then the immigration group, anything notable about them, like philosophers for Greek, luck for Irish, beer for Germans, even something like that. And then you identify the crossovers and tie that to this third group, which is possible locations within the city. And then we notice because obviously there's a lot of a lot of all of these things. Um, the the clue that matters seems to be supported by the image itself. So the image will often give a clear clue that what we were looking for in the data set. And additionally, you know, like the immigration stories or features were hinted at in the book or the image itself. But yeah, so John brought to us golden masters, golden, or, you know, the golden age of the Dutch golden age. It's a notable feature of, you know, like uh, the Netherlands. People go there, they go to see the art. But that got me thinking about this flower. And I don't know why I got thinking about the month and the flower and the gem. It's always seemed very redundant. But I simply Googled the, um, I always pronounce this one wrong. Um, calendula? Calendula, yeah. My dad made fun of me when I brought it up to him once. But <laughs> I wasn't even going to try. I was, I was silent for a reason. I think I call it so. the cal calendula. Um, Calendula. <laughs> but anyway, I, that may I, simply, have done me. I simply Googled it, and the first hit is the cal calendula, also known as the pot marigold. And I was like, pot marigold? Like in a puzzle that's prominently gold with the golden age, Im the image is drawn in the style of Rembrandt. And we know this thing's in the golden square mile. If, if it, is, it is not in the golden square mile, the leg eater at least is, but I think that what we've added to this proves that this is almost certainly in the golden square mile. So that's pretty yeah. much how Montreal works, right? I mean, that's that's really it. Yeah, I think it's excellent. I mean, I I never made the connection to the flower. And when you brought up marigold, I didn't hear, I didn't have to hear anything else to know this is yeah, right. Yeah. Um, the the important thing to note here, you know, like Phil said, is it's about a month, right? So the puzzle is almost a calendar type of puzzle. Although there's many clocks, it's not about time. It's about the month, the related gemstone, the immigration theme, the birth flower. So yeah, I think, I think that initial Montreal revelation was amazing. It got me excited. And, you know, as we go through the rest of these and, you know, Phil's going to jump into Boston next. I think the one thing to note that really worried me about the secret was, is this a good puzzle or not? And you'll learn that it's an extremely well thought out puzzle. Now, we may not be saying that the end game is perfect and precise enough to dig a three foot hole and find a box, but the puzzle is very sound. So Phil, yeah. I'll kick it back to you for Boston. Right, so after, so this was maybe 1 a.m. on a Friday night that I discovered the marigold and I'm like laying in bed, like, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. um, so, I don't know why is precisely, but I went to Boston. I wanted to do this for some solved ones. That's how what everyone always wants. That's what I always want is the solved ones. And Boston is one of the like the worst solved ones in that we kind of know what happened. We don't really know what happened. I'm always trying to strengthen it. And the first thing I thought of when I looked at Boston, I hadn't looked at it in a while. I look at it and I go, oh, this is August. Well, who's the most famous? What is August named after? <laughs> Caesar Augustus. There's your immigration tie right there in that most famous Italian ever, huh? So anyway, I remembered something about the quote that is in the verse that always gets glossed over. People are always saying if Thucydides is, or uh, there will be a Thucydides in Boston and a Xenophon in New York, but they forget how the quote starts, which is there will there will be the next Augustan age and there will be a Thucydides in Boston and a Xenophon in New York. So when I saw that, I was instantly just floored that we have the August puzzle and now we have this quote that 
you can find. And to confirm that quote indeed goes with the this image and this puzzle, you have Augustine in there as the tie. He's essentially saying this is the Augustine age. And now you must head to Boston and the area of his direction, which is the North End. So in essence, you're taking the Italian Augustine or Caesar Augustus, you're taking August, the month of this puzzle, and you're using them to get to the North End. And in the process, you've also paired the image in the verse. Mm. Yeah, so, I think yeah. it's excellent. I think it's excellent. The, the one thing I'll add with this, and you know, it, it kind of, it, it raises some questions, but it gets you to the same location. If you look at the, the uh, birthstone, the peridot, the, the thing that lends color and turns a peridot green is its iron content. So when I read that, it, it jumped out because if, if you guys remember, you know, Mr. Palancar was very um, clear that Byron was obsessed with old Ironsides. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's tricky because I look at the flower as well. The, I believe it's what, gladiolus? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the etymology of gladiolus comes from the word gladius, which means a sword. And, you know, you can argue swords are made of many things, but one of them is iron, you know, back in the day. So a couple potential iron links, but I think Augustus is just, you know, glaringly obvious in retrospect. And, you know, it was a, it was an amazing connection. At least as a verse image tie, even mm. if the um, iron ends up actually tying us to the location, because honestly, in this theory we're presenting, the semaphore flags being in the image actually support the iron connection almost a little more than the Augustus, but they're both, I think they're both prevalent. I think they're both intended. That's part of it. Like just building this web that has multiple confirmations is kind of what's made it so complex. But once you get on the right, like the right thread, everything falls into place. And that's when you know that's when you get that confirmation that we've been looking for. Yeah. And that's what I think we noticed as we started to plow through these. Um, I think, John, you even made the like comment of, oh, I see why Byron thought like this puzzle might get solved too fast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about that. If, if you could make this connection and, and figure out the months and if you think about it, you know, if you were researching from a library in 1980, it may be one of the, you know, first few things you looked up because it's information you're provided, you know, and you guys both have mentioned that in the past, you know, it's, it's very clear. It's consistent across all, all images. So if you, if you were to really dig deep into an encyclopedia or, you know, a few books, you may yeah. just crack op open the end areas for all of these puzzles, which is, which is pretty cool. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's tying it back to, you know, how he thought and why he may have been fearful that they could have been found quickly. Yeah. I feel like in 1980, it would have taken longer because he would have had to get maps for every city. And like, true for, for us, it was just like Google search thing. Yeah. You know, you're right there. But Streets. Things. Yeah. And we also knew a lot about the puzzles already, you know, like people yeah. research these, we know all the common theories. I think everyone's always known that most of the common theories are at least close. So when, you know, when we see something that links to a common theory, it's just like, we were able to start halfway through the puzzle and work backwards instead of on a couple, we still have to work towards the end. But um, yeah, we were able to kind of, it, it was easier to jump in having some end places in mind, obviously, than to have to build the puzzle how he intended. So yeah, the blocks seem to fit, right? So um, should we go into Chicago? A little foreshadowing there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, let's go to, no, next, I think Cleveland was, is a good next one. It's oh, really you, obvious. Yeah, you, 
you have Cleveland. Sorry, I, I skipped right over it. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's it's just an obvious one. This is one where, because once I, I had those first two, I started to think, okay, so he has a reason for every month. What are these reasons? I started trying to build, you know, just like a chart of like, why? Like if if he makes the month number the flower, is we are we using the flower? If if he, if the month number is on a clock, is it a different thing? You know, like I just tried to make kind of a connection. It kind of exists. I'm not totally sure. I have to look over it again. But um, for Cleveland, he chose March simply because March is three. And in the verse of he offers us an artist, he offers us a philosopher, he offers us a poet, and he makes it very clear. He doesn't need to tell us Socrates, Apelles, and Pindar are a philosopher, artist, and poet. We Yes, we know, Byron. Um, these are famous Greek figures. But it is also what we think about when we think about Greeks. We think about these philosophers. We think about these philosophers. But anyway, in the image, he gives us a triangle. And people have often thought that was Euclid's triangle. I personally think it might be Pythagoras, a little more common, a little more just on-site grasp. But that adds to this list of poet, artist, and philosopher in that we're looking for a mathematician. So it also ties image to verse again. But, you know, the, the thing with Cleveland, like I mentioned earlier, is it's very Greek. The whole thing is very Greek, the whole puzzle. So when you see that triangle, that's March. It's Pythagoras. Where are we going to find Pythagoras and all these things in the Greek cultural garden? Like, it's just, you know, again, you'd have to look. You'd have to find it. But it's a very clear tie that's supported by the columns in the image. It's just, you know... It's another one of those ones that's just kind of very clear. So that's Cleveland's easy. He chose March. March is three. Three is triangles. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. I think he could get you there a couple of ways. Like you mentioned, you know, for the Euclid fans out there, Euclid Avenue is right there. So that could be possible. But the, the fact that Pythagoras is on the wall, it does it for me. They're both so, on the wall. So that's the other thing. Is, is Euclid on the wall as well? Euclid, I noticed that. I didn't even I know that. that super yeah. Cleveland supercut, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, true. I mean, it's Greek to till the end. You know, there yeah. was no no denying that one. Which kind of derailed the whole puzzle, in my opinion. I mentioned that earlier and ruined my yeah, preamble. It's a good but, point. Um, it was too yeah. easy, right, for uh, for connection compared to some of these. It was very. It was very. Oh, we're looking for Greek endpoints, which is. Yep, you know. Greek Greek. So yeah, Cleveland or Chicago. This one you ended up coming to after I banged my head against the wall for about a week. <laughs> yeah, Chicago Chicago is not straightforward, but when it hits you, it hits you. And uh, I had been dancing around Ulysses um, from a James Joyce connection to Ulysses S. Grant. And, you know, I, I think there's still maybe some stuff there, but... Um, I don't know how I got there. I think I, I just started to look up the gems and the flowers and read as much as possible. And the one thing that I came to was the lily of the valley was found by Apollo. Who is Apollo? He's the archer. Where do you start? At the bowman. Now, when you start to look at this image after you make that connection, that's when it gets interesting and yeah. you start slapping yourself in the head, right? There are arrows everywhere. It's yeah, insane. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about it. I, I never, never considered even it. Them. Yeah, so it's that was, And it's what's wild. funny about that is the order that that came about was I noticed Apollo 2. It's front page Wikipedia, but I didn't think anything of it. I didn't look him up. I don't know. He's an archer. I don't. I, I just blew by it and was like, there's something better. I was hung up on the Emerald Isle, which might also be a part of this. But yeah, I, I, when John brought up Apollo the Archer and I was like, oh no. And like, we were talking about Ulysses this whole time. And I was like, John, do you know what Ulysses is famous for? He's like, no, I don't read books. And uh, well, it was Odysseus, right? I mean, yeah, you have to give yeah. me, I had to make the connection back yeah. to the Odyssey. Same guy, Odysseus, Ulysses. And I just sent him some cartoon of him shooting the arrow through 12 ax heads. And then that's when I was like, okay, well, if this is the true answer, it'll be supported in the image. And it certainly is not. 
And I go to the image and I just send these guys this picture <laughs> with all of the arrows circled. And Chris, what did you point out? Uh, just, the, the, all the little circles are what he's <laughs> shooting the arrow through. <laughs> it's, so true. And yeah, so it's 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 fairly well supported. Uh, like it or not, it seems like it's a slap in the face. So there's Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I just I never liked like Grant Park. People would be like, "Oh, well, Grant was Irish," and yeah. it, it was like, "Yeah, not right. really." But I mean, then you you bring in Ulysses and you bring in this connection to the painting, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, well, shit." Yeah, archers archers yeah. abound, if you will. Um, the next one is my per one of my personal favorites. Mine this as well. One, I could not believe how obvious this was and how stupid I felt. Houston, the children, or yeah, Houston. So it's widely thought it was in the children's zoo. Um, I'm just looking at the image, doing the same process we were talking about here. And I noticed this one's another one where he doesn't give us a clock. He doesn't really give us any specific this is the month even the flower is like hard to see john had to show mm. me the flower because it's been too long and i'm like huh that's weird he gives us seven columns and i remembered the five pillars of islam and i was like well that's a thing isn't it so i started looking up seven pillars and i looked up seven pillars and i blew by the answer twice before i finally settled on it because i don't like going on like the first hit is a book whatever okay but finally this book keeps coming up this book, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. And I'm like, okay, what is what is this book? I open it up. I thought it was some self-help book. I thought it was this, like, you know, the other secret. <laughs> but uh, I look up Seven Pillars of Wisdom. It's literally the memoir by T.E. Lawrence, otherwise known as Lawrence of Arabia, that the movie, the famous movie, Lawrence of Arabia is is based on. So you're telling me that the Arabian puzzle with seven pillars in the image is not calling out directly to the most like pop culture Arabian reference possible. And then I started, you know, then we started to think like, but why? Okay. So this is obviously the call out, but why? And John has always had a pretty, pretty pop culture you know white person in interpretation of what this this is this is the 80s right like yeah exactly i i have to say you know i'm i mean i'm thinking back then and i'll let you finish it but um i i'm yeah. handing it to you man i mean i've always argued that the immigration reference to this puzzle was the camel and at one point, I, I think I almost convinced Phil, but everyone else is just like, they, they don't even want to discuss it. I mean, it's not in, in uh, good taste right now to, to tie something like that to, um, you know, immigration. But in 1980, I think it's very, very relevant. And if, if you've seen that movie, right, you know, there's some very famous, uh, you know, it wasn't didn't he take like a long camel ride i don't even remember but so i know story, that they had yeah. issues with the camels on set like peter o'toole did the movie but, um, the movie is famous for camel problems which may or may not be the thing here but the reason they it's famous for camel problems is because the major story of lawrence of arabia is this fabricated two-day camel ride yeah from somewhere to somewhere else you can find it in the wiki that's the thing with all of these they're all just like they're all right there um yeah so he's famous i remember i was reading it and it was like this whole section about the book that was talking about did he actually make it here to there in in two days and i'm like who cares and i'm like skimming through and then i finally see like so his two-day camel ride was actually a real thing or something. This is like, can camel ride? And then yeah. you look at the image. There's a camel on top of one of the seven pillars. There's our, we get another confirmation. It's just very, very clear. Yeah, it's in your face. I mean, ironically, that, that 
ride was nodded to in Indiana Jones, you know, the, the first movie for anyone that believes in that folklore that it's been going on for a while, but um, that's besides the point. So yeah. Uh, St. Augustine, John, this was your, this was your baby. Ooh, St. Augustine, man, this one, this one may, may stir up a little controversy. Um, I'm still not sure how it all ties together, but conceptually, I, I think it's pretty sound, right? So the flower is the aster. The etymology of aster is star. There's a star sapphire in the image. That's that's the birthstone, right? He drew a star on. Yeah, yeah he made it very answer. clear that it yeah. was a, a star sapphire, right? So, you know, I think we 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 may disagree slightly on the connection to, to the verse, but, um, you know, one of the things that caught my attention right away is it, it they, the Wik, Wikipedia said, it said that the aster was created by the tears of the Greek goddess Astraea. And the line from the verse is what, um, teardrops in moonlight or moonlight and teardrops, yeah. something, something like that. Right so after that, stars that was one of the day, right? Absolutely. So, you know, that was that line was always kind of a, a head scratcher for me. But the controversy here is we all know that the um, the Castillo San Marcos was uh, was covered up. That fort, if you look it up, the style of the fort is a star fort. So I give you. St. Augustine, the star puzzle. I personally don't think people should start going to the Castillo. I would guess or, you know, think that Byron may have run into some issues there. The verse fits super well, you know, with um, the Fountain of Youth, which has the planetarium, we all know. Um, but it's, it's good to note that there's two different connections there. Yeah, so I'll leave I think you with that. The planetarium is interesting just in the sense that this is one of the special puzzles. This one in Roanoke, I think, are special in that they are indeed some of the earliest civilizations in America. So earliest European civilizations. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's a good call out, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Chris is always, <laughs> uh, he always stops us in our tracks once or twice, you know? But yeah, so uh, so it's, it's important to note that this one, the Spanish could just be like, doy, it's foy. And then he gives us this star to point us to the stars passing by day at the planetarium. Um, but the star fort getting covered up, interesting. Maybe he maybe he demoed this puzzle a couple times and people were like, oh, the Castillo. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> Who knows? totally. Or the lawyer was like, people dig up that place. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, enough on St. Augustine. Chris, let's talk about Milwaukee. Milwaukee. So this was an interesting one. I had been doing a lot of research into German the German like immigration story because that was just the next one on my litany list my, my litany checklist to go through and try to figure out I wanted to try to prove the verse 8 connection to Milwaukee and I'm looking at black forest ham and black forest cake and I'm getting absolutely nowhere and then you guys start working on the stuff and I'm trying to follow along and so I was like, well, I'll just let me look at Milwaukee. And the first, I'm, so I'm looking at it with these new eyes and I see this juggler and I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but the, the, the rebus, those items are in a ring. And I'm like, oh, well, ring is like the most German thing that I know. It's like the ring by Wagner. Maybe that's something. And I kind of just like threw it out there in passing like, oh, the juggler makes me think of the ring. And then I think, Phil, you took it from there. Well, I'm a music I ignored major. It. <laughs> yeah, John was like, yeah, yeah screw you like, guys. Wagner, Get out of here. <laughs> I'm a music guy. I played guy, trumpet I, a long time ago. And I agreed that, yes, the ring and Wagner 
are almost of the level of Mo like you know Mozart and Beethoven and, and whatnot and like the philosophers from from Greece like the ring is probably the most popular opera ever ever written uh people know it the lord of the rings is based on it so i liked the concept i didn't love it it felt a little deep i was like oh yeah that's a ring but i but as we were getting on in the numbers of these puzzles obviously milwaukee was leave was hung in the air because nothing else really worked john noticed aquarius as the month is the water bearer and we know that Mil that milwaukee lake park is a is good and i was like yeah i mean it's good but it feels a little forced i don't want to force these to locations aquarius yeah we haven't used the zodiac yet water bearer whatever so i start looking through the litany chris's favorite thing to do just to see if there's tips because it does seem like in addition to the image there are tips throughout the book um especially the part you know the, the front that kind of tip you off to where we're going. And I noticed the main, Chris noticed actually, the main ferry he's using for Germany is the Rhine Maiden. And I didn't make the connection because I don't care. Like my dad is the Wagner guy. I don't give a shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm a modernist. Um, but I flip, I, I go to my, my complete OCR secret on my computer PDF and I Apple F Rhine Maiden just to see all the mentions, just to see if this will give me one tip. And surprisingly, it shoots me to the back of the book, which this is one of those weird ones. I don't know if it's entirely intended as the method, but it's certainly a confirmation. Mm -hmm. The back of the book says, the Phantasma Glory is a direct New World descendant of the Rhine Maidens, the nymphs of the German river who guarded a fabulous hidden treasure and lured many a hero to his doom. Richard Wagner, an egomaniacal perfect example of fame addiction, wrote an opera about them. They betray their Rhine Maiden origins by two of their favorite siren calls. Take the plunge, go for the gold. And I was just, when I saw that, I was like, wait, Wagner, Rhine Maidens? Wait, what? Oh, and I look at the Ring trilogy and the first chapter is Das Rheingold, which is literally where the treasure is hidden underwater, guarded by these Rhine maidens. Mm -hmm. So that plus the ring, plus the supreme German connection, plus this quote in the back of the book, take the plunge, go for the gold, just screams, this thing is in water. We know this thing can't be in water. What's the next best thing? I would say Lake Park. And that's how we got to that one. It's a little taboo, I know, but even well, without the back of the book, it's it's screamed at if you know anything about Wagner, which Byron did. Absolutely. And the difference is we didn't start at the back of the book and then try to like get to a theory based on something we just happened to find in the back of the book. We made the theory and then found that the back of the book, the back of the book confirmed it. And I think we're more likely to see that kind of situation. Yes. And I did call my dad, as I said, just to make sure this holds water. No pun intended, actually. Um, and I said, Hey dad, if you think of Germans and rings, what do you think of? And he's like, Oh, I don't know. Uh, he, he, he had a couple dumb guesses because he was trying to, you know. He was trying to fit the mold, like he was trying to work on the puzzle with me. And I was like, no, you, Germans and rings. And he's like, I don't know, the ring trilogy? I was like, indeed. <laughs> so yeah, so that was Milwaukee. I think that one's very cool. Um, and I think it's very on brand for Byron himself. Mm -hmm. I love that you guys confirmed it in the back of the book. I mean, I wasn't crazy about that that concept of going back there and, you know, trying to, trying to do anything with it because uh, I'm just fearful that people are going to go crazy and all of a sudden, you know, the star is going to be in Dallas, right? The Aster will be in Dallas. But um, that said, um, it's, it's so good, you know, it's and that, so that's German, what, and it's, yeah, it's go for the gold. Take yeah. the plunge. I mean, <laughs> take the plunge. 
amazing um, stuff. So I, yeah, and like I, like I say, I didn't look in the back of the book. I apple left and shot to the back of the book. Um, Nola. Little controversy on this one, but ultimately, Ooh. I think it ended up pretty clear. John, talk about your flowers. <laughs> yeah, you guys hated this at first. I, I, I felt like I was talking to a wall. Um, we, how did I start? I mean, it, this one was, was difficult to connect, and it probably shouldn't have been. I think we, we started with Narcissus, had some conversations around that. There's a fantastic story there. Yeah. Um, but at some point I stumbled upon the name, an alternative name of the flower, which is Lent Lily. And uh, I'll leave the other flower to you, Phil. But, you know, when I thought about Lent Lily, I immediately, and I'm the guy that's trying not to swear, so I won't say what I really thought, but, um, I was just like, oh my God, Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras literally means fat tuesday in french the immigration connection so fat tuesday is the celebration the day before lent where everyone feasted and you know then then the parade was started the big party right so um i was like guys it's it's mardi gras it's fat tuesday it's you know lent lily and um yeah it seemed pretty obvious to me but i i think you guys had some reservations and you made a couple other connections, which helped you out. Yeah. Um, my issue was, I was like, yeah, Mardi Gras, we all know it's purple, it's yellow. How does that get uh -huh. to a spot? Like, it, it just didn't feel oh, like yeah. it fit because it was I argued a very specific spot, too. Very so. specific but. spot. And I approached it with zero bias because I don't, you know, I just wanted to prove John wrong, which is always fun and never works. Um so I, yeah, I, I went, I went deep, I deep dove, if you will. And, um, one thing I always noticed was the, there's two flowers in this one. They're both daffodils or someone's interpretation thereof, but I always thought the one on the left, it doesn't have like the normal thing in the middle with all the, mm -hmm. it has one thing. And I always was like, that looks like a bell, not a daffodil. So when I saw the phrase, often known as the Lent Lily or Easter Bell. I can't, it, that was, that was the first, that was the first anti-strike in, in John's favor. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we got Lent Lily on the right, looks just like a Lent Lily, classic Lent Lily. On the left, we've got something that looks like a bell, Easter Bell. So those two together, they kind of confirmed the whole Mardi Gras Lent thing for me. But John was arguing that this reduces to Gallier Hall and Lafayette Square, which I like the area. I didn't know if this reduced there. He told me, oh, yeah, the royalty stands there and cheers everyone on or something. I was like, they yeah, put okay. up the bleachers. Yeah, the, the, the bleachers, bleachers are on either side of the building and i'm like it's perfect like this one doesn't get you to the area it gets you to like a small rectangular area but i i i got the hesitation and i think you added it added to it nicely and you know confirmed it a little yeah. more than so i went deep like i say and i looked up the exact start of mardi gras lent or whatever i still don't really know about this stuff because I'm not into it. But um, ultimately, the first day of Mardi Gras, the day after Lent or the day of Lent or whatever, they take the trolley down St. Charles Street, St. Charles, for those of you who know the quote from the verse, to a masquerade ball and the Mardi Gras royalty vote on the best float or the Mardi Gras royalty is even voted for. And I know a lot of people think that arm holding a mask is, you know, the, the wolf in grandma's clothing, but it's also a purple frilly arm, which I associate with French royalty. And just like that, like that look, the wigs, the, 
frilly arms, the shoulder pads. Um, purple is the royal color, right? Purple That's is the not royal hard to color. Up. And I have a picture of the Mardi Gras royalty. They're in complete purple. It is truly a frilly purple arm holding a mask for the Mardi, for the masquerade ball. And then he calls out St. Charles directly. And it was just a little too much for me to tell John to shove it. <laughs> I'll take that one. I appreciate it. It's a small <laughs> win, small victory. So that was Nola. Um, another interesting feature of Nola I wanted to throw out there. Mardi Gras originally started in mid-December. That's kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's intended i'm sure it is i think that he really did spend a lot of time on finding locations that really 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 worked for these things but, he did a hell of a job right i mean if you look at it he did a hell of a job to take the months i mean i was like oh, is it gonna work you know but it the layers peel back mm -hmm. and you know they all make uh sense you know consistently across the puzzles and it did make me wonder with things like that, like, is the Lent Lily associated with December because of this concept? Like, you know, it always made me wonder if there's a little more deeper to the lore of things that made these work as easily as they do um, from a I month. Part of it, there's, there's a bit of misdirection here. And that's part of the puzzle is that the daffodil is the March birth flower and yeah. the narcissus is the December birth flower. And they're, the same flower so i don't really know what's up with that but you could have thought that mardi gras daffodil that that picture was march yeah that would have that would have been very you know an obvious thing oh daffodil mardi gras march and I, and sure. I think we did point easter out that what's cool about that is cleveland as i pointed out he didn't use the flower he also didn't make the flower look anything like a daffodil. Right. Intentional, so, not maybe, I think. When you're coming to the puzzle sight unseen, that would have been a trick. It would have been a little sleight of hand for you to have to actually get deeper into it and figure out that it was December and not March. Indeed. Um, Charleston. That's a good one. I like this one. This one uh, fell in line after much deliberation on things that were not the answer to the obvious answer um, that I think just fell in my lap with a simple Google. So I noticed that Mar April, sorry, April on this image is on the outline of Fort Sumter. And I think it's important to remember that like early on, you're looking at these things, maybe you don't even know what Fort Sumter looks like if you live in New York City like me. And you don't know that image is necessarily Fort Sumter. But when I looked up the various month elements plus Fort Sumter, the answer just hit me in the face. And I looked up diamond in Fort Sumter. And the first thing I get is a zillion results speaking of Fort Sumter's flag, which has a distinctive diamond pattern, which has a unique diamond pattern, which is known as the, like it was the symbol of the union during the civil war. And so when I was just like, oh, diamond Fort Sumter, it confirms the fort possibly, but there's also, John's always pointing out there's a Fort Sumter monument in White Point Garden, right? Yeah, yeah. At the base of the the um, the park, you know, basically where you know it would have defended against you know the incoming attacks. You know that that big monument there is literally the Fort Fort Sumter monument, um, and I think that's what makes this puzzle probably a little more challenging and tricky than some of the others. As the diamond puzzle is. Sure, you can think this is on Sullivan's Island or, you know, somewhere, you know, close to Sumter. But um, for me, all of those white points really help help show you which Fort Sumter you're looking for. 
and um, uh, white points you mean the the teeth within yeah the teeth the, the, the ends of the clock yeah, yeah. exactly the clock everything, hands everything in even this yeah if you look at the butter butterfly there's even like a w along the outline there, there's some the interesting diamond, stuff we have little white points like it's just like yeah every definition yep. of point you can come up with is in this image and is white yeah, there's there's a lot more symbolism in these paintings than you know, and we talked about that last time. Um, than probably a lot of people have been looking for, which yeah, could have been think, doing it wrong. And you added you added a big piece to this as well. Uh, Byron oh, was yeah. a Civil War buff, I think. JJP yeah. harped on that in what the Christmas thing. It was like, it was oh, Ben Ason. Ben Ason harped on that. And this is just very loaded in that if you look up this Fort Sumter flag, which is not hard to find, like this isn't deep. Um, in April is when Fort Sumter fell, essentially starting the Civil War. And this flag was taken to Union Square in New York City, where it was then used as this symbol of the Union. And it's just, it's, it's, it's really loaded even from a simple diamond, diamond, Fort Sumter, clock on Fort Sumter, we just confirmed, to a whole thematic April puzzle in Charleston. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going for this one that if, if the map on the mask isn't enough, uh, I think we're in the right area. <laughs> yeah, agreed, agreed. I think it's, I think it's deep. I think it's a little more challenging than some of the others, but you know, if there's truly a progression in the uh, gem value, it makes a lot of sense. So I like yeah. it. I think it's cool. Um, Roanoke, this one's pretty straightforward. I didn't like it, but it's it's clearly true. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not. I mean, what do you think of you know when you you think of Roanoke, the the lost colony? you know, the, the first English colony to settle in the new world, um, Virginia Dare, the first born, you know, child in the new year, new world. And then, you know, I got it from just looking up the month. January comes from Janus, which means beginnings. You know, it's the first month of the about, year, New Year's Eve, like again, you know, yeah, it points, it points to the, the right area, right? You know, whether it's uh, Virginia Dare, whether it's, um, you know, Fort Raleigh, you know, the, the Lost Colony, I'm not sure, but I think beginnings is the key to, to uh, the Roanoke puzzle. Yeah, I think that's really all there is to it. Um the land by the window you know it's it's in the image um i think we talked on most I, I just realized we didn't really hit the now we hit the image stuff i was going to say like the image confirmations are what really slams this stuff home mm -hmm. um so now we're getting into the uh into the territory <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so uh, so I guess I'll ask you this: Should we should we go to New York City first? I think I think it makes sense. And, yeah, because I I I, I want to just do a little public service announcement. The way this ends, it's not going to end well for a lot of San Francisco fans, and you know, I think Chris even is in you know a, a certain stage of grief at this point. So <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going through all know, twelve. <laughs> we'll. Uh, We'll get to that in a minute, but um, Phil, talk to us about New York because I, think I cool. love this one yeah. and it it's a puzzle that no one knows where to start, right? Everyone has, you know, some issues getting started and this could definitely answer those questions. I think we're very much in the process still. We're still working this one as a puzzle as it was intended because yeah, there's a lot of endpoints but I don't feel too confident about any of them. Um, so it's been fun to just pull all of this Russian stuff of which it's immense. And Byron's dedication at the beginning of the book to these 
Russian uh, freedom fighters in the Soviet darkness. Like, I mean, I'm nervous this one might get a little deep. I don't, my Soviet literature isn't good. I know the writers. I don't know what they wrote about. Um, but it's a big thing. A lot of what I'm seeing is Soviets. The writers are very, um, it's some of, it's some of the biggest writing in our, in like the history of the world. So with that lengthy preamble that has nothing to do with what I'm about to talk about, um, I've been looking at the basics. When I think of Soviets in 1980, I think about communism. And when I think about communism, I think about red, the color red. So that's where I kind of started my started my journey. And I think it's very well supported in that he has put St. Basil or the Kremlin, whatever people like to say that little church is, either one of those are in red square. So he has now drawn a red square without trying to draw a red square. He also has a red line on the left Times Square on the right, again, red square. Um, and that's something we talked about. The, the yeah. interesting thing about that, you know, without cutting you off there is we've discussed St. Basil is in red square. Mm -hmm. Why, why would he do it? You know, St. Basil doesn't make sense. You know, I've, I've thrown out there like, mm -hmm. maybe it's red, maybe it's, and I had no clue that this would come up again, but, um, yeah, I think it's interesting that we've we've touched on it before, but we just weren't able to see the connection. Yeah, so the thing I zoomed in on was the topaz. And what you find first with the topaz, it's named after Tope Topazianos or something, which was an island in the Red Sea. And I was like, oh, interesting, more red. Okay, so we've got some more red. Then I looked up November. And this one's interesting because we all know it as Red October, but it took place in November. And this was the rise of the Red Army. All, all of this stuff. It's just red, 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 red. And I think Red Square is where this, because of the image, because of those things I mentioned, I think Red Square is where this all settles on. So there's just been a few, I think we've stumbled on a few Red Squares we didn't know about in the city. Um, I don't know how much we want to go into like where we've taken this. I don't know if that's worth it in this juncture. I think there's still a lot of research to be done. I think there's something to be said about the blue. The blue. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's the one thing that bothers me about this one is, you know, Chris, you've all always talked about this potentially being the culmination of, of the puzzles. Right. And when I look at, red square it's coupled with a blue church when i look at the topaz you know being named after the isle in the red sea it's a blue gemstone the the painting is extremely thematically red white and blue Even so the I, I, I calls it out it says that the topaz is frozen fire ice yeah. blue red fire like he's he's taking it home oh, damn. Yeah. Chris always brings something to the table you didn't tell us about <laughs> so it's Paul I mean I think it's definitely possible but the red piece is extremely compelling for me the and red like white it. and blue yeah it's like it's still a maybe but we're working on this one and both in the verse and in the image in both of those, he has taken a blue element to lead to a Russian. The Rhapsody in blue to Gershwin. Yeah, yeah. Blue church, red square. It's kind of, it's kind of. He thought this out. I don't know what he was thinking. Um. I'd love to lay. Do you want to just lay out what we, what we found real briefly, or just move yeah, on? Yeah, you know, I, I think so, and I think, you know, this is one of those things that's very very difficult right and you know i've i know people like to keep you know good ideas secret and there's a reason for that you know mm -hmm. everyone wants to solve a puzzle everyone wants to find a cast um speaking for myself i'd love one but having worked on this thing for so long i just want the puzzle to progress 
I want to get ideas out there. But knowing that you're in, in New York City, you know, it's also very, if very tricky. Is, if this spot is right, it's not there anymore. I agree. And it's a it valueless so puzzle to begin with. So I think what we, so New York City, where we took this is we looked for red squares. John found a couple cool red squares, little red square associated with the uh, little red schoolhouse. It yep. was cool. I couldn't find much on it. So we just kept Didn't looking. Work. Um, we found Noguchi's Red Cube, which has been there forever, which is featured in movies. And it's just a big, bright red cube in uh, Zuccotti Park. But what's yeah, interesting just outside, yeah. is that Zuccotti Park used to be Liberty Plaza Park. And, and I got to that same place separately from you by thinking about that dedication at the beginning of the book and thinking about Russian freedom and our discussion like about red squares. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, where can I find Liberty Square in New York? And it took yeah. me to Liberty Plaza with a huge red square in it. Yeah, so the too long didn't read of this is we essentially have the US Steel Building, which is a big black building, but US Steel itself is a gray giant. In the shadow, we have Liberty Street and Liberty Plaza Park. Many think that Liberty or that the arm that extends over the slender path is Lady Liberty over the narrows. What's better than that than not actually using her herself, but Liberty as her, as a uh, proxy, if you will. This is at the corner of Liberty and Church. At the top of the image, we have a church next to Liberty. Um, we have the red cube. We have the red square that got us here. Behind that, in very prominent writing, we have Marine Midland Building. I, I think that's a pretty good argument for the middle of one branch of the five. We have the Marines, we have Midland, and we have a guy who's notorious for pulling things, pulling words off of walls, according to one of his friends, I think. Um, and then a stone's throw, a literal stone's throw from this red cube. We have the the. Uh, and Phil, we've 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 spoke about that a lot. So I I just want to clarify for you know we we've discussed the the five branches among us for so long that I think it's almost a given to us what it means. But in case anyone missed that reference, we're, we're talking about the five branches of the military. It's, it's one of the branches. So just in case someone missed yeah. that. And then the middle of one branch of the five. Like it's just, it's a great, if you read Marine Midland on a building. Midland, amazing. It, it flows, it flows. It's too good. Um, and then a stone's throw from that, like I was saying, is the uh, Federal Reserve which is Hamilton's biggest feat. I know people love Hamilton for the Indies native and I hate him, but in this location, the building's right yeah. there. I don't know if there was a, there's no sign there now. They're all new signs. There might've been a sign at the time. I hate playing the might've been card, but on the yeah, federal great. reserve in relation to Hamilton, there might've been a sign that spoke of Hamilton and his Indies upbringing or just Hamilton himself. But you, you said Trinity Church is a stones for stone store from there too and that's where his headstone is like we have his a lot name of is his yeah. name's going to be written all over that thing and yeah Good i point. think so all those things together covers quite a bit of the verse um i even thought the isle of b um which at the time was liberty island it wasn't still bedloe's island as everyone knows um could just be another call to the same proxy that he's already using for lady liberty liberty uh liberty street is is the street that is the northbound of liberty plaza park so you are no south of the isle of b there as well so as yeah. far as just just words that work with the things mm -hmm. that we think yeah i love broadway too i mean for gershwin if we're looking at if we're looking for rhapsody in blue we're thinking about gershwin um, I think Broadway could be, you know, the, the Gershwin reference. It's, it's simpler than people have probably been trying to make it 
in the past, but it kind of fits the theme, you know, calling out all these streets. So super interesting. You know, one question I had for you, because we are missing the, um, the hymn of hardwood or hymn of hard word. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe I'm <laughs> having too much whiskey, but um, yeah, the, the, the federal reserve. Now, was that where the Hamilton statue was with the other two statues or is that a different statue is even closer? The statue yeah. is on the, uh, crap. I knew I was going to have to remember this and wouldn't, uh, but it's literally across the street from the red cube. Like it's like, yeah, when I was, I, I have a picture, I'll, I'll, I'll overlay it. Um, and it's it's right by the, it's across the street from the red cube so we actually had hamilton there i don't know if it was labeled or anything might have been labeled that's technically a sign it's not great but it works yeah i like it i think it's an amazing start it's one of the most yeah. exciting starts i've ever seen for new york city i mean before this it, it felt like people were throwing darts you know and it, yeah. and it kills off that uh, subway map idea, which is fantastic. Screw you, dude. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, that's this is what I'm always telling people. Like, just because I mentioned this, this isn't my end-all be-all. I'm not saying it was no. there. We're just following the clues, trying to solve mm. the puzzle. If the subway map's out, if the subway map's a coincidence, I don't like it. It's a hell of a coincidence. It's a hell of a coincidence, but I've seen worse. Like, look at Fandango. True. Anyway, onward to... Um, San Francisco. Whew. My goodness. Chris, what do you think about San Francisco? I think we've talked around this idea more than once, and we just never were able to connect the dots or to put it together or to say the words in the way that like sparked the idea. You know, like how- Interesting choice of words there. Yeah, you know when, oh, <laughs> you know oh, when, per- um, when, when someone, te- when you look in a drawer, you're finding something, you're looking for something, you're looking in the cupboards, you can't find it. And then, then you ask, oh, yo, where's the seasoned rice vinegar? And like, oh, it's in the second shelf on there. And you're like, oh yeah, there it is. Um, it's the same with puzzles where like, once you know, that's why deconstruction of these things is so easy. Like Boston, it was odd. Once you're like, oh, it was there. And you're like, oh, of course it was there. Um, Everyone's a hero after the fact, right? Yeah. yeah, And it's me included. Um, (laughs) once, once you, once you know, you know, and sometimes it's good to, to force one of those assumptions and just see what shakes out. I wrote a blog post with that phrase in it. It's one of my favorite things to do is just force assumptions as if as if someone told you that the cask is here. So Chris, continue. You're putting this on me. So yeah. <laughs> and and I think we're doing that on purpose just to kind of see in real time how how it how it comes out, you know. So there's obviously in the San Francisco painting, Golden Gate Park, the Presidio, all these like very overt things that tell you San Francisco. And then there's these mysterious things around the dress that have eluded everyone's thoughts for a while. And you have a yin yang, which is very Chinese as far as the imagery goes, it means it's a duality, but it's also a unity. It's a, it's many nice. and it's one. I could, we could deep dive into German philosophy on that stuff too, but it's a Chinese puzzle. Um, as you start to look around the dress, you have a triangle inside a square, three things, like three points inside of four that make this one thing. You have a the bottom right, you have a cross within a rectangle. The cross represents for Christians the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one. Right. So you've got we've got this multiple things and the unity thereof. Then you come around, and I think Phil is always harping on those three circles being. I don't want to screw this up. What are they called? 
uh, Boromian rings, which is essentially right. balance again. It's just they're all just balance opposites working together. Um, yeah. Fire and Even water then, is that the one below that? Is it fire and water? It's a hundred percent fire and water. Oh, yeah. Shit. I, the thought yeah. I always thought it was fire. air and water. Okay, well. No, it's even better. It's balanced. It's even better. Two opposites. So yeah. So yeah, what? the mount, the mountains and the sea. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff in here that just, just screams. You know, balance, harmony, harmony, unity. So that's all well you know, and it's, good, but we're not trying to solve the puzzle right now. We're trying to follow our method. So good point. What is our method? Is we take the month. And we take the immigration, we confirm them with the image, and we point to a location. Absolutely. So what is our what is our month? Our month is June. What do you find about June, John? Yeah, this one floored me. I, I, I guess I should have known just based on it being in early summer, but the month is derived from Juno, which means marriage. What is marriage? It is unity. It's a union of two people. Mm -hmm. And what is a yin yang? It's is that a question for me as well? Two opposing forces. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually haven't. Is this a quiz? This at all? I didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have yeah. a yin yang in the image. It's confirmed in the image. It's very Chinese. We have marriage. We have a yin yang. They're both unions. They're both balances, and. We have a giant pole in the middle of a square in San Francisco that is called Union Square. And I hate to say, uh, keep it simple, stupid, because everyone says that. But where's the biggest pole in San Francisco that's not Coit Tower? Union Square. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, that was the reveal. I blew it. No, John yeah, no. hammered it home. <laughs> You, you gotta you gotta you gotta take this one home john no i think you know when i when i look at this you know you made one of the most you know cool connections that i've ever seen because i really do believe there's a lot of mixed misdirection in this puzzle and he was he was drawing some stuff to represent golden gate park but you know tell us what you found with the the blocks and what I call 18th Street, 20th, and crossover in the middle. Oh, my squares. Um, yeah. I mean, I think symbolically, it's, it's really quite simple. Um, and this is what I was talking about with the drawers and the cabinets. In that when you start to try to make it work, it gets kind of easy in that, what is she doing? She is joining squares on the left with squares on the right. It's a union of squares. Yeah, I and it might not. It was be good, true, man. But it's good. It's and really then, good. And then we asked the question, "What about Lincoln?" You know, everyone's like forcing Lincoln everywhere. You know, hey, Lincoln. And then I was like, "Oh my goodness, what's perhaps the most famous thing that that Lincoln did?" You know. He, he was known for, you know, leading the charge on the Civil War, you know, on the Union side. But not just on the Union side, he reunited the That's United a good point, States. too. He did. He, he did. That was I had to take it there. that next level, didn't God you? damn it. Yeah. I mean, I, I only got to Union. I, I saw Union Army, and I was like, my goodness, it's just everywhere. It's, so it's good. It's good. Um, it's apologize so to everyone that that likes anywhere else in San Francisco, but this bad boy is probably one of the lost casks, unless for perhaps you know that that giant step takes you somewhere outside of the square, which is a possibility. But um, in the last couple of days, we haven't figured it out. Yeah, so that's that's we'll fun. save that for a separate episode. Yeah, absolutely. I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say like again, this isn't end all be all, it's just heavily supported. Um I think Chris has some counter arguments that we'll get into in another episode. Um 
but just using the method as we talked about, you know, it, it points to places and places get confirmed. And once you start to add clues on clues on clues, you start to lose that ability to just say any place is as good as the next. I dig it. You know, I think, I think the one thing that was really exciting about this for me was we were able to, you know, take each one of these puzzles, utilize the month, you know, something within the month, the immigration theme and get to an area, right? I, I don't think this is the first step. I really do believe you needed to identify the cities first, but once you knew the cities, this helps narrow your search, right? Mm -hmm. This will get you to a location where you can start that verse because we always discuss the verses, you know, it's, it's kind of random. It can work in many places. Didn't seem Not good. if you have an area to method. start. Yeah. 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 Cause and I like, yeah, it's very thematic and that immigration still gets you to the spot, but yeah, the month, really, do we really think that the month was only to tie the images to an immigration reference it didn't it hasn't worked it made no People sense it. yeah it doesn't and why the flower the gem the month like it's just too much it's redundant it's excessive but yeah so that's but yeah yeah i mean i guess i i'd, I'd tell you guys you know listening to us i i hope that you can appreciate the methodology that we put out there I hope you respect the fact that we didn't try and keep this from anyone. We figured this out, you know, over the weekend, you know, it, it hasn't been long. After two um, years of kicking the tire. Yeah, around, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I mean, once we, once we, yeah. you know, we came up with, you know, you came up with the Marigold. I think that's when it all, you know, that was a catalyst, right? Too and many, it just too many golds for one image. Too many absolutely. golds for one puzzle. Yeah. I mean, people don't have to disagree. They don't have to agree with us. They don't have to agree with us on the the locations. Use the method as you will. I think the evidence is pretty compelling based on what we presented. But you know, if you appreciate it, let us know. You know, I I it bothers me that, you know, we we see these people, you know, talking about the ideas, but, you know, I look at it and I'm, I'm like, we, we have X number of views. We have X number of likes. Do people not like what we're doing here? Some people say they like it. So, you know, let us know, tell us in the comments, give us a like, if it makes sense, tell us what you want us to do next too. You know, we're, we're working through this. Um, I, I uh, implore people to, to try it their own way, right? Use the information. Um, you're gonna land on similar things that we have, but there may be another layer to this, right? The, mm -hmm. the stuff Chris does with the litany is extremely interesting to me. You know, I, I have to think what, what you guys found with Milwaukee um, was intentional. It, it would be the most ridiculous coincidence I could think of, you know, based on the methodology. So, you know, is there other stuff in the back? Maybe. I don't think it's going to be, you know, very random things that, you know, weave a web that solve the puzzle. You know, the one thing that, you know, we've identified is it's a pretty damn good puzzle. You know, if it's based on the calendar and, you know, he conceptually, you know, made all this happen i i keep thinking about how how do we build this phil you and i have both you know played a little bit with making puzzles it's not an easy concept but so it's doable it's a lot more it doable is than a lot it is of, a lot of things i've come up with in the past yeah yeah so that's it for the the month methodology Whew. um you guys want to talk about some others yeah, let's wrap up with uh with some quick other. Um, I have a fun one today. 
um, Laura got accepted to that Codesmith Academy, Chris. Congratulations. Is exciting because I put her to work in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, great U.S. treasure hunt. Just looking Can't for stuff. Can't wait for it. I, uh, one of the things we thought might exist was palindromes. I had her come up with a little code to pull every palindrome in the, uh, in the puzzle. And that came up on her test. (laughs) So I'm not, so I'm not, uh, you know, not saying that I helped, but I helped. And the other one was the, uh, closures, Chris. One night, uh, I got a little drunk, texted Chris because Chris, uh, there was a conversation about closures, which is a, uh, which is like a, a programming construct term, yeah. programming construct and i said they were they were arguing about the importance of closures i go i know a guy who knows this <laughs> texted chris go what's a closure he sent this long diatribe and everyone was like that was as good as that was the best explanation we've ever heard well on her test they asked her what a closure is so here we are <laughs> <laughs> so the puzzles you know the puzzle puzzle does good things outside of outside of the puzzle too you know that's true. That's fun. Yeah, I love it. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna nail the the U.S. treasure hunt, the Great U.S. Part oh, Two. Hopefully, I'm it ready. Releases. I'm ready. Yeah. I have. I have my entire. I, I like to notes. automate. You know, if if you guys can help automate this, it's it's gonna be a much simpler. So uh, we just gotta figure out the the little tricks, right? Yeah, and I don't, Whenever... I don't see that as cheating. I see that as it's part of the puzzle is like... Oh, absolutely. Identifying yeah. what to automate is part of a puzzle. Yeah. yeah. I never released the script that I wrote to try to solve Phil's third puzzle. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't where I needed to be, but it was, I was pretty close. But it's, it's weird. I had to like think like the puzzle master to be able to write code to solve the puzzle and that was a a really interesting sort of take on it it was fun to see your iterations too and try to deduce what you'd done (laughs) yeah so i think that about that about does it for this episode and i hope everyone liked the concepts we brought to the table it was very exciting for us to see that this wasn't just a stab in the dark shitty puzzle um it seems to align with what JJP was getting at as well in the concept of there is an overarching scheme. We constantly ponder Definitely. on that. Like, do the puzzles lead to another puzzle? Does this one lead to that one? That never felt right. It never seemed to work quite right. This does feel like a major element of the images that we have done jack all with up to this point that seems to tie in very well with, at the very least, the immigration and at the most with the end spot like we've, like we've deduced here. So yeah, um, hope everyone enjoyed and till next time. Thanks guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>